So is carbon monoxide harmful? Well, each year more than 200 Americans die from carbon monoxide poisoning exposed in their home. And another nearly 5,000 are hospitalized with different symptoms and things like that. So let's talk about carbon monoxide and where it comes from. First, from just a scientific scenario, when you're burning fuel and then there's unburnt fuel that gets reburnt, that's where carbon monoxide is produced. It's the reburning of unburnt fuel. So in a home, for example, a fireplace that isn't venting properly, just wood burning in a fireplace can produce carbon monoxide. That's why the venting is so critical. We, we get big signs on that quick because the smoke starts rolling in the home, right? So let's take your furnaces, for example. You've got, you've got those burners that fire up with that 100,000 BTUs or however much heat. And your heat exchanger, is a, it's a metal chamber that, that those burners are heating up and then air is blowing across that metal chamber to transfer the heat into your home. And then the carbon monoxide and unburnt fuels and combustion gases then go out the chimney, right out your roof. Well, the challenge with the heat exchanger, as I had talked in the previous video, is if you just take a paper clip and bend it back and forth, back and forth, what happens? Eventually it gets hot and it breaks. So the same thing takes place with the heat exchanger. Over time, it can get weak spots or hot spots. And then if you end up with a breach in that heat exchanger, you can have carbon monoxide that can then leak through that heat exchanger and into the home. When it comes to protecting the safety of your family and, and, the, and the comfort of your home, obviously carbon monoxide is not an element that you want in there. Where the, where the real kicker with carbon monoxide comes in is families can actually experience low levels of carbon monoxide poisoning and not even realize it. People will go to the hospital and they'll be like, ah, I'm, I'm feeling fatigued, getting a lot of headaches, and, and they go to the hospital two or three times over a, over a three, four month period with uh, no diagnosis as to what's really going on. And, and to understand carbon monoxide poisoning, you gotta do a blood test and actually determine if there's carbon monoxide in it. And these low levels of carbon monoxide poisoning, um, all, albeit not lethal, can certainly drag life down and make life uh, not as fun. And all of a sudden spring comes around and all these the headaches and the fatigue and things like that are gone. So carbon monoxide can be dangerous in your home. And the challenge with carbon monoxide detectors on the market, when you go and buy one, they're generally higher level. So 70, 80, 100 parts per million of carbon monoxide must be present for those to go off. Well, the problem, that's, that means it's dangerous. Now, most of these carbon monoxide detectors, that means when it's going off, it means get out of the home. That's dangerous, that's a problem. So they don't really protect you or let you know when you're having low level carbon monoxide poisoning. So three parts, five parts, 10 parts per million, the super high end carbon monoxide detectors will go off at somewhere between, anywhere between three and 30 parts per million. And that's your best choice for making certain that you're not receiving low level carbon monoxide poisoning and your family's safe. And on the second side of it, very critical on the safety side to have your system inspected on an annual basis. We use military grade inspection camera. It's about a $3,500 unit and it's the same camera that they use for nuclear weapon inspections. This is what we use to inspect our heat exchangers and of our clients to make sure that there's no breach in that heat exchanger, putting your family at risk of carbon monoxide poisoning.